I've been thinking long and hard. What can I do to bring in new viewers to my channel? Viewers that aren't necessarily related to the West Ham community or the football community for that matter of fact. I came up with this idea, Scranville, where I review unique restaurants in my own city and across Canada. Who knows, I may even take this international if I go abroad and try out different cuisines. Now, I've been researching restaurants in my city of Edmonton, looking for places that serve different kinds of food or stuff that maybe I haven't even tried. And I then am going to give my thoughts on it. First place we're going to in this inaugural episode of Scranville is TNT Supermarket. Let me explain a bit more about this place when we get there. But basically, we're trying Chinese food today and we're going to be seeing what a Chinese supermarket looks like. So come along and join me. I can't wait to show you what's around and hopefully this is the good start to a new series. Let's roll the titles because I haven't used them in quite some time. Okay, so I'm here at TNT Supermarket in Edmonton. It's located in West Edmonton Mall on the second floor in the Asian quarter of the mall. Um, it, this area has bubble tea places, a Korean restaurant. It also has a um, jewelers nearby. And obviously, as you can see behind me, there's TNT. TNT is the lar largest Asian grocery store chain in Canada. And uh, I must put a little disclaimer in here, although I have stepped foot in this place before, I've never actually really bought anything from this place. I think the most I ever bought was a spring roll, and I've never really eaten any of the buffet here. And it was only a week ago that I actually started thinking about this place and wondering what it was actually like to try some of the food out, because they serve things in here that are imported from China, different flavors of different foods, and you'll see things that you wouldn't see at your local Asda. Um, so, come along inside and let's go and check it out. So here you're going to get some uh, Chinese fruits. This is, I believe is called a dragon fruit, but the Chinese word for it is a uh, atamoya. I think I pronounced that correctly. This is an akazuki pear. I mean, look at the size, it's like a... Big apple. Probably shouldn't have touched that mind. This is a Fuyu persimmon. Another quite exotic looking fruit. As you can see, all the signs are in both uh, Chinese and English. Okay, so this section is selling um, just normal takeout stuff like ready-made meals and we've got barbecue sausages up here some um, green beans also something that looks like a um, I think that's like a black bean sauce dumplings are very common in uh, Chinese cuisine you have a huge variety of them in this frozen section um, spicy vermicelli this is actually Korean um, porch vegetable and uh, chives as well. You usually boil these in water and this uh, have them steamed. I've had them before, they actually taste really good. These kind of like cornettos, but they're Korean and as you can see, they're called Wilco. So you get a variety of foods from China, Korea, Southeast Asia. It's all very diverse. And um, here, as you can see, spring rolls. I'm gonna try some warm ones in a little bit though. One thing that definitely strikes me about this place is the variety of products you get. You get all different types of flavors of the same generic Asian foods, but they all do diff differ. So for example, you might get not just an average spring roll, you might get a spicy spring roll, a chili spring roll, beef or chicken spring rolls. You definitely have a lot of choice and it, it's, um, it's very good actually. It's not just um, obviously Chinese people that visit this place. You get a lot of people from all backgrounds coming in here to buy some of the produce. And uh, 
Yeah, it's a, very, it's a very popular place. It's quite busy right now, in case you can't tell. You can hear a lot of noise behind me. We're in the aisle that sells rice. I mean, look, here you've got Thai jasmine rice selling at about $35, which is roughly 21 pounds. You also get uh, Mali rice. This is more Thai rice here. And uh, just behind me are pickled containers. Um, see, pickled mushroom. We've got here pickled bamboo. Uh, what else do we have? Let's see if we can find something unique and different here. Um, Dagger tooth pipe. This is um, fish in a like vinegar, I suppose. This aisle is going to be um, quite interesting for me, actually, because I've never, ever heard of Chinese crisps before, but I have found some. Well, disclaimer, I say these are Chinese. These ones are actually Japanese. I don't know what they're called. Cow bee? What flavor are they? Barbecue. These are barbecue chips from Japan. Um, what else do we have down here? We've got um, shrimp flavored there, like prawn crackers, I suppose. And um, we also have some, this is different, seaweed flavored potato chips. I'm not gonna be trying these today though. I am uh, don't think I'm really big into seaweed. Staying on the topic of seaweed, I found uh, this one as well. This is from uh, which country? Vietnam. And this is uh, spicy seaweed flavored seaweed. Oh, I thought, these were, I thought that these were potato chips. No, the, this is actual dried seaweed with a little bit of chili in it. If you go up here, <clears throat> this is actual fish skin, dried fish skin. So you might want to have a little munch of this while you're watching Netflix and chill. So up next, we have the fish aisle. These are live lobsters, and these are often cut up in front of you. Just below them, oyster shells. And also next to them, crabs. These are live, of course, and these are cut up in front of you. If the guys over there behind the counter are doing it, I'm going to show you an example. Below them, live sea snail. I suppose you take these home and boil them. You have uh, this in to help you fish them out. Yeah, I'm not sure what you serve this with. The crab, I suppose, can go in pasta, lobster as well, but what does snail go good with? I'm not so sure. I don't know if these are alive or not, but I'm going to try and pick one up. Uh, whoa! Oh, this thing just gave me the death stare. But Sorry mate, but you, you know, you're gonna die anyway, so don't be looking at me like that, giving me the nasty look, mate. That was the general gist of some things that you will find in this supermarket. Uh, I'll just give my thoughts very, very quickly. Um, interesting is the only word that really comes to mind and it got me wondering what would you serve those things with like lobster tends to be a lot more of a fancier thing that you'll find in michelin star restaurants crab maybe too what can you serve um snail with what can you serve octopus with there was some frozen octopus back there i'm not so sure um but you know, these things are eaten in Chinese culture and um, I suppose that they are very popular things to eat. No matter where you go in the country or even supermarkets like this, it's kind of bringing Asia to Canada to provide home comforts for the Chinese and greater Asian community. So I think that's another reason why this place might be very popular. I'm now gonna go and try out some spring rolls and uh, Maybe some dumplings as well. I'll see what I fancy though. Okay, thank you. So after a little bit of deliberation, I decided to go for the spring rolls. I'll try these out in a moment. This is the moment that I've been waiting for on this 
episode of Scranville. The self-serve Asian gourmet. Not a bad price actually, it's $2 per 100 grams. So it's quite cheap, in all honesty. I'm just gonna show you around and see the different kinds of foods they got. Obviously, you're going to start with the choice of rice or noodles or both. These are the stir-fried rice noodle. Rice, of course and the stir fry noodle. From what I can tell, the orange chicken's very popular. I mean, look, it's nearly all gone. That definitely um, is something that I'm gonna be trying. We've got um, stir fried mushroom with bok choy. Bok choy is another vegetable which is used in Asian cooking quite a lot. Ginger beef, a um, Chinese American classic. If I come around this side, I'll show you what's on the other side. We have um, deep fried cod, um, eggplant. And going around this side, we have sweet and sour pork and uh, deep fried fish. Um, I might take one of those just to try because I'm not big into deep fried fish. I don't even like fish and chips. But I might give that one a whirl as well because we'll try something different. Let me go through what I've bought. Spring rolls, try a couple of them and save some for later. And here is the Chinese uh, box. So what you have in here, you have uh, capella, a little bit of fish, beef. I've got noodles and rice at the bottom. I've also got ginger beef, um, some of the orange chicken, and some sweet and sour pork to go in this as well. So let's give it a try. Start off with the beef. It's the only part of the meal that's really got any um, um, juice in it. <clears throat> Everything else is quite dry. Uh, we'll go off next with the, um, let's try the fish actually, and see how this one plays out. I'm a little nervous, I'm not a big fish person. Am I supposed to break its head off or something? I don't know. It's looking at, looking at me weird. Um, Um, it's not bad, but it's a bit tasteless, actually. I'm not even sure how to eat this properly. Um, it, it just it just tastes a bit, a bit like strong. Do you know what I'm saying? Like a bit, a bit into the skin, and uh, I'm not particularly going to bite into the head or anything. I don't want to go that far, but I'm glad I've tried it. I don't think I'll try that one again, though. Uh, next, we're going to try, I think this is the orange chicken, so I'll give that a whirl. I can tell why that's popular, it's very nice. It's got a very nice zesty taste to it. Bit of the rice. Well. I think the rice and noodles in this are going to be fairly standard. Um, we've also got beef in this, some ginger beef. A lot of um, fast food Asian restaurants serve this as well. I used to work in a golf course and serve this. Let's see how this one compares to those two places I mentioned. It's chewier than your yeah, standard fast food joint. So that's definitely a plus, it's something I do like about it. Rice noodles we'll try as well. Try that again actually, didn't really get a lot of flavor. This has got a bit of beef with it. Yeah, that's not bad either. Um, the food there's actually pretty nice. Um, the only complaint that I've got about it is it's very dry. I'm used to having a bit more sauce on it or maybe a little bit more juice inside of it, but um, it hasn't really taken away from the taste. I think um, that's still pretty nice. Um, it's leaving a good taste on the tongue. It's not too sour, it's not too sweet. And temperature-wise, it's cooked perfectly. That's good too. Um, 
all of this cost me $15, which is around nine pounds. And that's next to nothing. That's still pretty cheap, right? For all this stuff. It's definitely not too bad. And also I'll get onto the spring rolls now. See how these taste. Trying to work out what's inside of these. Um, carrot, maybe cauliflower, cabbage or something. Either way, these um, should have got a dipping sauce for them because, uh, again, bland a little bit, but that's my fault, not their fault. Mm. Tasty nonetheless. Yeah, quite liking this. So I'll give a quick review of it. Um, you had a big variety at the buffet. Um, the beef's the only real thing, meat-wise. It has any um, real juice and sauce onto it. There was tofu, but it, was, it wasn't really a flavor that I liked. And they had a mushrooms in like a black bean sauce with bok choy. But I wasn't too keen on that. Um, just got some very basic generic Chinese um, side dishes into my box and uh, taste them all up. But I think um, when you mix different flavors together, you certainly feel it a bit more. My only one concern was the fish. Um, I'm glad I tried the fish, had a bite into it, but it was just too strong and um, it didn't really have a good taste to it. But other than that, I really like this box and yeah, definitely recommend this. It's very nice. Okay, so I've just left the supermarket and I did actually manage to eat all of my spring rolls. I still have a few left, but I'm gonna save them for later and eat them tomorrow, maybe something to snack on. Um, just so they don't go to waste. Uh, here are my um, thoughts on TNT Supermarket. Um, <clears throat> unique, I think in terms of a, shall we say, standard supermarket. Um, it sells loads of different foods, some that people may be quite afraid to try. But what I would say to that is don't be too afraid to try it. Uh, of course, I didn't buy any of the octopus or squid because I would have had to have gone home and cooked it. I just don't have the time to do that at the minute. I'm going to actually see a film a little bit later at the time of recording this, so I don't have time to cook that. <clears throat> However, there are different ingredients that you can get here and you can experiment with at home. For example, you might want to try something with crab or try something with a different fruit or vegetable, like those um, persimmons or a bok choy in your next stir fry. You have a lot of choice at this place, like I say, and the food was absolutely um, quick, easy, but perfect and very filling. I actually had quite a big box and um, didn't fill it all that high. Filled it probably about 60% full. But I actually eat quite a lot of it. I think just for next time, if you are to go to a TNT supermarket or an Asian supermarket, just be a bit careful on the portion sizes because the food is very filling. And that's a good thing though. Um, but I really enjoyed the visit here. And uh, if I want to get some um, takeout food or something for my lunch i might come here actually again it certainly gets a big tick from me i'll give the food out a 10 i'm going to give it an eight the place itself i'm going to give it a eight as well because it was uh, good to have a look around it certainly taught me a few things about what food is popular in asian culture and for the hospitality i would give it a a seven well i didn't really speak to anybody in the place but uh, people certainly seem to enjoy going there and there was a good vibe around the place so yeah thank you very much for watching um, this first episode of scranville let me know what you think and i might do another one a little bit sooner so thank you very much for watching take care everyone and i'll see you all soon